In this episode, I talk with Chris McAllister, a speaker, author, and coach about how he creatively shifts business owners' mindsets so that they can make the best decisions for their business. Chris's optimism is incredibly infectious. He's not just all about motivating people. Um, he, he helps people identify their roadblocks uh, that are along their path and helps them tear them down. So before we begin, I know the audio on me isn't great, working to fix it, sorry. So let's go to Columbus College of Art and Design where I talk with Chris. All right, so uh, let's dive right in. Can you start with a kind of short introduction of yourself and how you create business? Yeah, uh, so Chris McAllister and um, how I create business. Uh, I feel like the world creates it for me <laughs> with what I do. Uh, and that's like the easiest way to answer that. I didn't even have that as a plan or anything. Yeah. This is like where my mind goes. We, we live in a space where so often the loudest, most bombastic, most aggressive person gets promoted or gets the leadership uh, opportunities. And so what we do as a company specifically is work with leaders to help them figure out who they are, how to lead at their best, and be a good human, right? Being a good human and being a good leader aren't at odds with each other. Um, and especially in our day and age, I feel like this is more needed than ever. So. So in a way, just human systems create it. But the way that we do it is, and specifically, it's just with uh, serving people well leads to more serving people. Yeah. So it's been mostly referral. But when we sit with people, it's just helping them understand, like, where are the problems that you're experiencing? Yeah. And this sounds cliche for some, but problems are all always leadership problems. Yeah. Somebody's tolerating or avoiding something uh, they're trying to make up for a lack of clarity with an increase in intensity. You think about like the movie moment in sports movies where the coach has to get everybody's attention. And in the movie moment, it's like the rah-rah speech, super hype filled and very driven. Um, but, in, but in real life, they know from research, and there's a book called The Talent Code that broke this down. It's not about the long speech. It's about the specific, precise feedback. Um, and so it's, it's for us, helping them understand they're wanting to talk to us because they feel some kind of problem. Yeah. Uh, is it a cash flow problem? Is it a leadership problem? Is it a, is it a struggle of the, the leader themselves, him or her, and they're feeling maybe unfulfilled in some way? And then how can we help them know it's small changes? They're going to help them break through to a big result. That's great. So uh, if, if, I was, if I was to say to you, what's your one or two word title? Yeah. What is it? Ah, uh, um, I mean, the easiest thing to say for people is like uh, author, speaker, coach. Yeah. That's what people can relate to. But um, I sometimes when I'm checking out like a square, uh, I'll write fear ninja because I feel like that's what we do. We like help people figure out their fears, get underneath that and unblock it. And I say we because we do have a division now. So there's there's the main thing that I do. And then we have an athletic division and the goal is to have other divisions. That's great. Yeah. Um, that's so, so. I'm gonna jump right in here. Yeah, let's do it. A different question, I love like, it. Is there ever a time where you're kind of um, are you ever worried that you don't know what to say to people sometimes? Like, like I'm assuming that a lot of the people you talk to have have similar similar issues, but I'm sure that there's something that comes up sometimes where they have this new problem, and you're like. Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, speaking, you're showing up and you know, like, where you're headed and where you're going. And, and even if it's live. So I did a thing for uh, some managers at a local juice place last night. And, uh, and, and they're awesome. I love their, their brand. And, and it's training I've done many times, but it's live, so it takes on its own life, and that's fun. The, the real challenge is with coaching. So we have a 12-week program that we take people through. Like, I know like where they are, what's gonna happen next. We have that so dialed in, we can, we can train people in it now. The, the real challenge then is not only just the coaching, it's the leadership coaching, which is like a year long program we do. And so if I think about it this way, it's like 
with the 12 week coaching, which is like them figuring out who they are as a leader, uh, it's almost like playing tennis. I know where the ball's gonna go and I'm ready. Uh, with the leadership coaching, it's like playing racquetball, but there's eight different walls rather than just the one. And there is pattern recognition that's happening, but I don't know exactly which way it's gonna go. So um, I've just devoured too much and, and then screwed up way too much. I mean, I, I've fired people every way you can imagine. I've taken situations where I had a ton of momentum and messed with it and monkeyed with it too much and ruined uh, you know, healthy moments uh, and organizations and stuff. And so I've just seen a lot and experienced a lot. So I kind of know like it's gonna be one of these eight walls the ball is gonna come off of, but I actually love that part. It's like, let's show up and see what's gonna happen today. Um, is it something that they're blocked up in with a personal relationship, with a teammate, an employee, a co-founder, um, and then let's dive into it from there. And oftentimes what I'm doing is helping people build a bridge from one part to another part. So take even your life for right now. No doubt, because we all have it, you have some place that you feel challenged in. You're trying to rise to that challenge and figure it out. Well, you've done hard things. You know, I think of the conference last year, like to see a vision, to execute it, right? And then to see it through well, like so few people do that. Uh, and so you've done hard things. And you, if you can build a bridge between the hard things you've done and the hard thing you're facing, what were the skills that you drew on? What were the best parts of your character? So I'm helping people sometimes see what is obvious to them once they see it. They're like, oh. So, so you're not trying to necessarily give people direct answers for their problems. You're trying to help them kind of navigate in a way. You're yeah. Trying to help them see the things that are actually there and standing in their way of what they want. Totally. And, and to help them get somewhere quick, we do often be like, like, we've seen this 17 times. This is the four ways this could go. This is the two ways this could go. If you do this, you'll have this. If you do this, you'll have this. We can do that. And we do uh, when, when the situation demands it. You know, I, on one hand, I hate cliches and I love them. Conventional wisdom is almost always wrong. But cliches are true. And they're, and they're cliches for a reason because they're true. And it's that whole phrase, uh, it's cheesy, but you teach a man to fish or give him a fish. So we'll give the fish if they're like starving and they need to solve that problem and we want to help them. But a way better, we teach them to fish. And that's actually why like, we don't do leadership coaching with people until they've been through the 12-week coaching because that's how we teach them how to fish. But sometimes, you know, in this leadership coaching scenario, they just have so much going on. They're adding locations, their business is expanding, and different things are happening that we want to help them. Like if they're initiating a change, we have like seven templates that they can run any change through to make sure they take as many people with them as possible and not burn any bridges. Well, why wouldn't we go ahead and get them there faster with that? Yeah. Dude, I could go for hours about all the leadership stuff. I'm such a nerd with it. <laughs> that, I mean, that's why I wanted you here, honestly. You know? I, I, I laminated, I, I, I can remember being like 25 and reading leadership books and learning templates and patterns and laminating them, Matt, and putting them in my wallet because I like would be somewhere, and this is before you had a smartphone and you know, yeah. I'd pull out my wallet and like study these because I wanted them to get inside of me. So now like I had a guy say to me last night after a training, he was like, I noticed this one place we went, you could have probably talked for hours on that. And I was like, oh yeah, I wanted to, but it That's wasn't a, the right place. Right now that, I have that problem with, with sales funnels. Yeah. Where I, so I teach, teach a motion graphics class. Okay. And the other day, I'm sitting there making a little upside down pyramid, and I'm like, what am I doing right now? <laughs> but like, there was a couple of students that were like, this is helping. Like, this yeah. makes more sense. Because yeah. like, you know, they, they focus so much on one thing. Um, they focus on like making the art. And it's like, there's, there's a lot more to it. Yeah. Like, you know, you're making it for a reason, for a person. You know? Yeah. Like, you got to think about how exactly it is you know, this, this stuff that you're doing in Photoshop, how does that benefit somebody? Totally. Because that, that's where the value of you know, creative work really comes from, you know? The happiest people that I've worked with, and I, and I don't like happy in the sense that you ask somebody, are you happy? Because they always, depending on their wiring, they're gonna focus on why they're happy or why they're not happy. We all have reasons for both. Yeah. So maybe a better way of saying it is the most fulfilled people I've seen 
know that they need to make, teach, and sell. So they, they need to make something, and they need to be able to teach something, they need to sell something. The selling is the empowerment, the teaching, you know, is this, uh, I'm adding value and improving people's lives, and the making, the craftsmanship. And we're in a season right now where I think people, there's such a celebration of making and craftsmanship, which I love, but it's denigrating the skill of selling. And if, if, you, if you make and teach but don't sell, you're going to be poor. <laughs> you know? And if you teach and sell and you don't make, you're, gonna, you're not going to be fulfilled because the craftsmanship isn't there. And I've seen people that make and sell, but they don't know how to teach and they feel without a sense of purpose. So it's really looking for all three. And, and you know, we work with people sometimes that in their job, they're mostly teaching and selling. Well, so then you need to make some craft brew at home or something. You know Seth Godin, he makes vodka and does uh, coffee beans and well, that's because he's doing so much yeah. teaching and selling. Yeah. You know, anyway, geek that, out on that, that. that. No, that's really interesting that you say that because like that, that's, I find myself doing that exact same thing but I've never heard anyone kind of put the words to it. Like, yeah, or, yeah. You know, to me it was always like, yeah, I always liked kind of teaching and that definitely makes me like feel better. Yeah. It's just one of those things where you can't really figure it out. Totally. But, um, that, that makes total sense. But yeah, I mean, I'm also thinking like if I was just to teach, I would, I don't know. I, I think I would, I would just feel really burnt out of that whole thing. But, um, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. Um, kind of going on here, um, can you describe basically, now you, you might even debate and some other people might debate on what you do. Is that even, is that creative? Yeah, uh, and I absolutely believe so. Sure. That's why I wanted you here. Yeah, it's not not in the sense of creating a painting or anything like that. I think that you have to be really creative in how you think and how you kind of react to certain things. Um, so, can you talk a little bit about um, kind of your creative process? Yeah, totally. If that makes any sense. Oh yeah, it makes complete sense. Um, yeah, so for me, creativity has two manifestations. One is sitting with people and helping them unblock their best solutions, but also very much like fire hosing them with, with options. Uh, because most people are binary in their thinking, and anytime you're either or, it's because you're not considering like the third option. And you just kind of, it's, uh, it's almost like visually take your two solutions that you're coming up with and smash them together and then see this third solution. For me personally, how I express creativity, it's, it's never ending. Uh, I'm always inspired by like taking my thinking as far as I can, fleshing out worldviews and philosophies and absorbing, and then wrestling and sitting with that and considering the times we live in and, and then what's helpful content that can be made out of that. So like, I mean, I geeked out for a decade on like leadership and psychology and different fields and um, you know, I, I'm, I'm currently studying um, social psychology in a very deep way and just absorbing, absorbing, absorbing. And so then I'll just go through a period where I make. So recently released our fifth book, um, super excited about that. But driving back from um, a thing last night, which is a day after the book yeah. launch happens, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to put together a talk on this. And my creativity just feels so alive and activated. And, and if I could do whatever I want, I would go right now, shut myself in my office, which is my closet is at the house, and like cave into this world where I'm just gonna flesh out, like, where have I seen this before? What patterns, what academic literature, what research, what do I see on the street? And put all this together to say, okay, how can I create a helpful talk out of this? Which will then usually be the next book. Um, I know the next four books I want to write. Like they're here. I've got two of them outlined. So for me, it's something that when, when, when your creativity is unblocked, you can't help but like make it because you know what that feels like. And yeah, there are people that are be like, okay, I remember one time I talked to this guy. He was like, so you're a consultant, you know, which is a fine title to use, whatever. What are you really doing? You know? And I'm like, well, I'm not helping people with uh, something I did. We're actively building or an organization. We, you know, we have an ambitious vision to train a, a certain number of people in, in a process, in a way of processing leadership because I want to move the needle 
in such a way that insecure leadership is recognized this fast and people go, nope. And secure leadership is celebrated and championed and they know how to get to it. Like I, I know how to become a secure leader so that I'm not insecure and unnecessarily hurting people. Uh, so I think if you actively are building something, you're not just helping others, which again goes to the make, teach, sell, your creativity is going to be accessed because I have a lofty lifetime goal that demands my best effort every day if I'm going to get to it by the time that I'm 75. And um, it's going to require all my creativity. Not only all my creativity, but everybody around that wants to help. So long answer, but I'm just like fired up about it. No, that's great. Yeah. So what's, what would you say is like the, the most common problem that people come to you with? Yeah. Uh, there'd really be three answers. One is um, business owner wants just things are good, wants them to be really better. Um, and I think about like driving. They're coming around the turn and they want to be able to accelerate in the turn. And of course, if you know anything about manual transmission, the way you can accelerate in the turn, you downshift. And it's this, it's this counterintuitive approach. And it goes a little bit to what we were saying earlier. When, when a person's in that place, they think, oh, I need to go harder at it, more intensity, long speech in the locker room. No, bring it down, more clarity, more focus. Um, and so that's, that's one way. Two way, the second way would be um, a, a business owner that is not happy with the state of their business and they feel kind of stuck and they're on the hill and they can't get it into first gear and get going. And, and sometimes, usually, oh, I say usually about 60% of the time, there's a co-founder involved and the relationship isn't great. Not bad, sometimes bad, <laughs> just not the best it can be. Um, and so we're unpacking some of that before we can even work on their leadership, before we can even work on really getting things healthy. Because if, 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 if the top you know, leaders, the founders, the co-owners aren't in a relationship that it's really fun and healthy, I mean, it just bleeds down into everything else. The third way would be just ambitious people that because uh, it, it's all referral that have been referred in and they're like, man, you know, so-and-so did this and they were like, this helped me so much. And it's really a thing where they're maximizing their leadership. Uh, they want to, they, they believe that they can learn approaches and knowledge to go farther faster. So I think about it like this. Um, our athletic division, uh, the guy that leads that, he works in the NBA. And so, like, even an MBA team is like an average business team. You've got top performers who, like, want all the game film. They're going to work on their mindset like crazy. They're going to build triggers. you got a middle pack that is uh, content to show up and play on their talent. And then you've got a bottom that is actually self-sabotaging, right? They're making choices that keep them from showing up and being at their best in the game. Well. That third group is kind of like this, you know, and so sometimes they're in corporate America or wherever in different places and they're just like, I think I can learn things that are going to get me to a place of being at my best. And, and, you know, it's not just performance, it's also just how you engage your life and enjoy relationships and once you know how to zero in one area, it spills into the other areas. Yeah. So a lot of people, and I'm sure that you've encountered this, a lot of people will, and I'm guilty of this, of this as well, where I read a book, I see a talk, and I'm like super inspired. Yeah. And I just want to like get to work immediately. And then it just kind of wears off. Mm -hmm. Maybe like a day or two later. If it was like a really amazing talk, I might think about it for a few days. But then it wears off and I kind of start going into, not necessarily like bad habits, but just like yeah. the same kind of, habits I was going to before. So what, what do you say or what do you believe helps with that problem? Yeah. Um, well, there's a, there's a high level and a, like a tactical level. The high level is there wasn't enough meaning made uh, in when you, when you started out. And so I really do believe like the future belongs to people that know how to make meaning. Um, they know how to like connect the actions to the bigger purpose. So 
why did you go out for that thing? Like really get stirred up. And so the first stage of any vision happening in your life is getting bothered. Like, ah, this is good, but it's, it could be so much better. Or this is bad, it needs to be good. And you're looking at it going, oh yes. And, and you're stirring up all that emotion. Now the emotion dissipates because you don't go into the second stage, which is prepare. You just jump in. Well, I'm gonna get bothered and I'm gonna prepare. How do I prepare? I make a plan to finish it. So if somebody's like, I want to rework my business model, I want to write a book, and it's, it's again, it sounds cliche, but it works. You gotta break it down to those small steps. The, the tactical advice or the street level advice of this is sparse conditions help you more. Um, and this has been proven through research that if, if everything around you is really comfortable, you're gonna drift back into that comfort rather than the fire of making it. So I'll actually go through phases where I'll strip like everything away and have like a, I, our initial coaching program, it, it's, um, I mean, it's amazing. Like the way that it changes people's lives and it's, it's just sold so much. I wrote it in a closet and not the one I'm in now. It was a bifolding closet yeah, where it was in a different house, but it, the, the bifolding doors, you know, I, I set up a standing desk and I would have to turn around and like grab it just right to shut it. It would shut right against my back. And I stood there and like, I wrote this in that because there was like, what else are you gonna do here? I got clothes, clothes, it's dark. It's got my computer screen. Um, and so we've recently just finished the biggest thing yet we've accomplished, which I don't, whenever this comes out, I can share a little bit, but it's just a giant leadership training academy. Tons and tons of content. The closet, man. It's like a different closet, but it's like my kid came into the closet and she saw me sitting at this, you know, and it's a standing and a sitting area. It's like this wide. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was like, no, I appreciate that, but this is intentional. <laughs> That's great, man. Yeah. Whenever, whenever I started, uh, started my business it was next to our queen size bed and it was it wasn't that tight but it was definitely I don't know, it definitely wasn't like a, a great time yeah but um it's sort of like you you kind of think about that time as being like really special you know it's a reason that's like it's it's an archetype of a journey because it's it's true it works you're bothered you know so we've, my wife and I have, have built a couple of houses um, and, and we want to do that again. And I don't want like a super comfy, luxurious home office. Uh, I want a little bit more space, uh, which is, and we'll do that. But it's, I know that would be like the death of me. <laughs> so what's a, a common mistake that you see that people that, that business owners tend to make? Um, something, something that you might see often. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we, we really focus on like the deep stuff of who they are because when they can relax, <sighs> I don't have to prove anything to the marketplace. I can like actually calm my own anxiety down and focus on the solution I want to deliver. It's just like wearing the appropriate size pants. Uh, so if you're like, if you're not over a million yet, zero in on that product, get it so tight, sell it like crazy. If you're over a million, then it's a little diversification, but around this core offering. If you're over 10 million, it's systems and processes, right? If you're over 50 million, now you've got to get creative again. And these are just common patterns that broke, have broken down and been written about in different places. Uh, but, but the fix isn't the external, your model is off, the internal of why are you trying to force something? What, what if you really face reality and go, why isn't this working? And, and even a step before that, what isn't working? Um, an entrepreneur or leader's strength is that they're stubborn, tenacious, and persistent. An entrepreneur or leader's weakness is that they're stubborn, tenacious, and persistent. Because then they can keep going too long on something that they need to change the approach on. Yeah. So you, 
you know, talking a little bit more about, um, you, you started talking a little bit already about the book that you just released. Yeah. Um, can you tell us more about that book? Yeah. Um, and, the, and the book came out of just a moment where, so I have three daughters right now, 11, 13, 15. If the 11 year old were here, she'd be like, yeah, but 12 and 14 days. <laughs> she was saying that at the book launch. And, uh, uh, and so I, I'm sitting at the dinner table. This is January, you know, 19 months ago, whatever that is. And uh, I had this feeling, Matt, and it, it sucked to have it. I was like, I don't really feel a sense of awe being a dad. Not necessarily negative, just like, whatever. Well, obviously I'm not saying that out loud. That's inside words. But it made me like, oh, that's not good. Um, and so I knew enough to know that it doesn't help me to force or hype myself into a different state. I've got to accept reality as it is. Um, my motivation for this role isn't as strong as I would like it to be. And in this, you know, the parallel with uh, sports and business, you know, people lose heart for their mission or their business and, and they don't acknowledge that and pay attention to that. And so I'm like, all right, like a tree with leaves attached to it, when in the fall it has to let go of those leaves, I have to let go of the fact that something's changed. And when you let go and you go, okay, this isn't working, you're gonna enter into the winter phase. And the winter phase is kind of desolate and cold and windy, and it looks like nothing's happening, but the trunk of the tree is actually getting strengthened because you're really doing a deep dive at that point. And you're going from this isn't working to why isn't it working? And so I was standing in a cafe, um, I do a lot of meetings at it, and, um, and, and I'm in line, and the guy taking my order, it was his weekend, uh, so it was like middle of the week, but you know how that works, it was the end of his weekend, and I just said, man, how was your weekend? And he goes, it was awesome, I got to see my daughter play in the snow for the first time. You know, this is about six weeks after I had that revelation sitting at the dinner table going, I don't feel a sense of awe, so it's winter. And I'm like, oh man, that makes me think of the best advice I've ever heard as a dad. You never know the last time your kids are gonna like experience something or ask you to comb their hair, or read to them. Or... And then I just, in the middle of this cafe, start crying. I mean, I, I don't remember the last time. And I go through all these last times that I couldn't remember. And of course I'm standing, now I step over to the side because people are in line and I'm totally oversharing and crying and this mess. But at that point it was like, oh, I'm in the winter season. I just figured out why it isn't working, why there was a loss of motivation. Because I don't have kids anymore, I have teenagers. So I relate to them different. And it entered me into the spring season, which you get energy because you're like, oh, I need to think my, about my relationship differently with them. And it really relaxed me for their changes, because it is different, you know, when they're kids, it's like, hey, you wanna go? And it doesn't matter what I say, they're like, yeah. Now it's like, I could be the fifth choice. <laughs> You know, hang out with friends, go on a walk, go to the park, play with video games, you know, oh yeah, I'll hang out with you, Dad. Um, and so, so, but there's some spring energy to go, let me enjoy this relationship for it, as it is now, but also relate to them different, because they're teenagers, which once you get grooving on the most effective focused actions, then you're gonna go into the summer where you go, let me rest, let me enjoy this. And so I'm currently enjoying them being a teenager. And a ton of parents can't say that because that's like they're losing their mind <laughs> when they're that age. And, um, and it's the same when a leader s comes in and sits down with me and goes, my team just doesn't get it. Yeah. Gosh, they're just driving me crazy. Or, you know, I don't have that same motivation I did for this business. So I know that somewhere in this process, they're stuck. That's why it's called the stuck book. And we just wanna figure out where they are and we can figure that out really fast. And then what's the most effective action for them to take next to get unstuck so that they're they're back in that process because everybody would love to skip from this isn't working to summer <laughs> fall to summer you can't do that you got to go through the winter and then the spring so dude that's like the three minute version of the book <laughs> i can also do the four hour version let's, of it let's do the four hour <laughs> <laughs> um, um where where can people get that yeah, so thestuckbook.com takes them straight to Amazon. If they want to know more about the book's story, a tattoo that I got, and see some interviews that we did, uh, it's siteshift.com, S-I-G-H-T, shift.com, forward slash stuck. That's like the stuck, the story of the stuck book. 
Um, okay, so before we go, um, you know, kind of speaking directly to kind of business owners yeah. or, um, or anybody, anybody else kind of involved with kind of building a business, um, what do you feel like they, they should do before they talk to you? Mm, that's a great question. Um, or or what, should, what should they have done already? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it l face reality the best they can. That's just it. I mean, they can't face it. I like to say that they can't face it fiercely <laughs> because there are some ways that they're tricking themselves and that happens for everybody. But for them to face reality and go, the best I can say it, this is where I am right now. I'm not happy with this. I'm happy with this. So we actually give a paradigm, winning, losing, stuck, inspired. Where do you feel like you're winning? Where do you feel like you're losing? Where do you feel completely stuck, can't figure it out? And where do you inspired? That's great. Yeah, That's diagnostic. Um, so you, you kind of already mentioned it, but uh, where can people find out more kind of about you? Uh, so you mentioned the book, but where, where can they find out more information about you or, uh, or how can they get in contact with you? Yeah, uh, the FBI most wanted database, no. Uh, <laughs> SightShift.com is the best place, S-I-G-H-T, Shift.com, and that's kind of like the main hub. Everything shoots out from there. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much, man. This has been great. Dude, awesome. Fun for me to do it. Appreciate awesome. you.